Tonight, reaction to a Target 8 investigation that's raising questions about how the state polices its doctors. How a complaint against a doctor who performed abortions in Muskegon was not investigated by the state despite allegations that he had put women's lives at risk. As Target 8's Ken Kolker revealed today, the decision not to investigate Dr. Robert Alexander was made by a physician who knew him well. A doctor who was instrumental in Alexander getting back into medicine after getting out of prison. Woman had an abortion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is not about pro-life or pro-choice. This is about women's safety. State Senator Tanya Shootmaker, a member of the Senate Health Policy Committee, says she will ask for a hearing to investigate Target 8's findings. Target 8 found that then chairman of the State Board of Medicine closed out a written complaint against Dr. Robert Alexander despite their prior professional relationship. It, it is extremely troubling um, that uh, any person, regardless of whether they sit on any regulatory uh, committee, would have this kind of power to really put the public at jeopardy. The complaint alleged that Alexander had botched two abortions at his clinic in Muskegon, putting the women's lives at risk. About a decade before closing that complaint against Alexander, the board chair, Dr. George Shade Jr., played a key role in helping Alexander's transition from federal prison back into medicine. In Senator Shootmaker's opinion, clearly there was an abuse of power here. State records show Shade had helped Alexander regain his revoked medical license back in 1998, writing a letter on his behalf and supervising him at a clinic after Alexander got out of prison for selling illegal prescriptions. It was at Women's Medical Services in Muskegon where Sharia McLeod says she went to Alexander for an abortion in 2009. She says that five weeks later she learned she was still pregnant, 30 weeks along. Her son Jeremiah is now three. McLeod's OBGYN was the one who filed that complaint with the state against Alexander, saying Alexander could have killed her. The complaint also included allegations of a second botched abortion. It was Dr. Shade who reviewed the complaint and marked no investigation needed. Shade told Target 8 that he followed the appropriate process, but he hung up when pressed on the potential conflict of interest. Shootmaker, who is a former member of the Board of Medicine, wants to know whether the state can reopen that original complaint. If there is any possibility, I think it's uh, uh, incumbent upon the State Board of Medicine to really examine it and to go back and to understand where they failed. What's not clear is, what is Dr. Robert Alexander doing now? The city of Muskegon shut down his clinic after finding what it called unsafe and unsanitary conditions after a reported break-in there in December. By phone, Alexander told us that he would not reopen the Muskegon clinic. He said he's no longer working, but he has not returned recent calls. Target 8 checked a Detroit abortion clinic where an anti-abortion group claimed that he was working. I'm Ken Kolker. I'm looking for uh, Dr. Alexander. And who are you? I'm with uh, Wood TV, the TV station in Grand Rapids. Uh-huh. He doesn't work here. Okay, he doesn't work here? No. Okay, I was told he does work here, so. No. Doesn't he work was working here, but he doesn't anymore. We tried a clinic in Ypsilanti. State records show that Alexander was the owner of AA Abortion Advice and Aid Clinic, also known as AA Women's Choice, as far back as 2004. But his former neighbor said Alexander closed it about two years ago. It's not clear why the Ypsilanti Clinic closed, but that neighbor gave us his opinion. Uh, it was kind of kind of dirty. Yeah. And uh, how so? Real dirty. The man who owns the barbershop next door says he's glad it closed. Not because he's against abortion, but because the pro-life protesters were bad for business. Protesters had posted YouTube videos of Alexander there. The barber says that he visited Alexander's Ypsilanti clinic a couple times. He had like, um, kind of like blood on the carpet, you know, like, you know, like in the reception area. It was... He, he never did clean up. We tried Alexander's home in Plainwell several times, and we tried an old brownstone in Detroit, an address that the city of Muskegon had for Dr. Alexander. It's where the city mailed the list of violations it found at his Muskegon clinic. Neighbors say it's been vacant for years, and the owner told us he's never heard of Alexander. I'm Target 8 investigator Ken Kolker.
Ken Coker has been digging into the closed Muskegon abortion clinic for months. And you can see all of his stories right now on woodtv.com.